Hey guys, welcome back uh, to Free Live UK TV, whatever it is. Um, we had a, a, a request on one of the previous videos um, to talk about how to deal with uh, swimming and kind of like working within a current and uh, how to be safe, I suppose, therefore, in a current and kind of... Slack tides, flood tides, you yeah. know. So, as, as divers, and I think in particular, uh, from a spearfishing point of view, currents play like a really big part, right? I mean, you, you will struggle to go out somewhere and experience no current at all. Uh, in open water, in the ocean, there's always something moving from A to B, okay? And uh, identifying a strong current or a current that could help you, as well as a current that could hinder you, mm. is really important. Um, I mean, current is actually good for, for spearfishing yeah. and fish. They love current. The best fish generally are in the current or near the current. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I mean, like, uh, I mean, visually identifying a current from uh, the the edge, you know, from the headland or beach or whatever. There are ways that you can do this. So <clears throat> actually, I suppose first what we should say is. I guess the types of current that you can experience as a diver. So ultimately current is just moving from one area to another. Okay, so it's a, a one volume of water moving to another area. Um, we have current created like a, a classic rip, you know, you, you hear like uh, rip currents rip on currents, the beach. Yeah. Rip currents on the beach, you know. Not much um, where the lifeguards are in the lie, etc. Yeah. You know, they put on their their boards. Yeah, talking about be rip aware. Currents. Be aware of a rip current. And the rip current is ultimately deposited wave, wave water retreating out into the ocean again. Okay, so where a wave breaks and leaves the water on the beach for a moment, that water has to go somewhere uh, and it retreats back out to sea. Now, it can either form a slight undercurrent and go uniformly along the bottom, along the, the, the seabed, or more likely, it will pull and join forces with more wave action and create channels that run out to sea. Now you're unlikely to actually be in a rip current because, as such yeah. as, a, as a spear row or a free diver because um, you don't really want to be diving in those sort of conditions in really Where surf, heavy surf. surf and, and, yeah. So it, it does happen. I mean, in South yeah, Africa, happen, you yeah. generally you've, you've got a lot of uh, waves, and often, you know, the guys are. You know they're punching out through shore break. Mm. That's pretty solid, and and they get out, and 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 the game fish are running along the the, the, the back line. Yeah, so behind and it. Yeah. Behind it, you know, and you know you've four foot, five foot sets out there, and you're up and down hitting game fish. Um, so yeah, it yeah. it is it is there it's something but, to be you know considerate of. You need to think about it. But on the whole, yeah, your on the spear whole. fishing and free diving experiences. Yeah, you want to be, I mean, I suppose, especially if you're, if you're questioning current, maybe we can assume that perhaps you're not as experienced yet and therefore diving in conditions like Brett just described would be a pretty bad mm, idea. That's years of, yeah, yeah diving. Yeah, years of practice. So anyway, rip currents, you can see a rip current from the shore because a rip current uh, normally displays itself as an area of relatively calm water amongst uh, breaking waves. Okay, so... If you've got sets of waves coming into the beach, uh, you might find an intersection where it's a, like a heavily dimpled ripple um, and the waves aren't forming even waves and breaking cleanly in that section. And you might even see uh, churned up sand or other kind of detritus just mm. washing backwards, you know, and out. Like a river sometimes with yeah. um, there's, there's small rapids on it. Yeah. yeah. And if you get caught in a rip current, you know, the, the classic R and I escape and what we would say as well is just swim sideways. Okay, so. Not back against it. Yeah, never ever try and fight a current, no matter what you do. You fight a current, you will lose most likely. Uh, so what I always suggest is if you feel yourself getting caught in a current mm. of any type, just let yourself go with it for a moment, relax, calm yourself, see which way you're moving, give yourself a few moments to compose yourself, and then swim perpendicular to that current. You wanna cut out of that current, okay? So the current's going this way, you're gonna go this way, and it won't be long before you're out of that current, okay? Um, 
And that will, of course, allow you to then stop and think and move and, and go somewhere else. Now, the, the type of current that Brett was talking about earlier, which might induce a lot of fish movement as well, probably more of a tidal current. Yeah. Uh, now, a tidal current is created by, of course, the moving of the tides from high water to low water or vice versa. And on the whole, water likes an easy passage and it's trying to find movement from an area of high volume to low, vol um, to low volume, vice versa. It's trying to move from a big space to another big space. It's trying to occupy, you know, when it's moving from one bay out into the ocean or back into another big bay, whatever. Um, so when you're looking at a site that you're thinking about diving, just kind of have to start thinking, is what I do at least, is think about, okay, where's the water going to be moving on this particular setup, okay? Um, a classic example is here, because it is, I say classic because it, it confuses people, but it's very typical, is the current that we experience on the Cribber in Newquay, uh, whereby you have two beaches or bays, essentially separated by a prominent headland. You have uh, Fistral Beach, which is got a kilometre long or something, and then on the other side of Town Headland, you have Newquay Bay, with a com combination of a lot of beaches, which is a very large oh, volume of water. Okay. On a rising tide, the water pushes across horizontally from the headland and whips into the bay. Okay, so you get a strong current coming across. On an outgoing tide, it whips off the end of the headland and goes out to sea. The funny thing is, is that on the fistral side, you only have a very direct current in a small area coming down what's called little fistral, which is a narrow passage of water going mm. out. But it's actually easier to avoid on that side because the water movement from fistral being a smaller beach yeah. is a smaller volume of water. So you're thinking big body of water is going to produce more power, you know? Yeah? Yep. Yeah? Okay, are you with me still? Just about. I'm with you. Thanks, man. So, it's going to be like a monologue. Um, again, but the same principles apply with being safe in that current. So, once you've identified it and the way that it's moving, if you get stuck in it, move sideways. Okay? But just like Brett says, there's going to be a lot of fish life in those areas because it's going to bring a lot of food to those areas. Definitely, yeah. And I mean, one of my favorite things is to hunt just off the edges of the, these currents uh, using the ambush, espeto, agachon techniques and actually being 90 degrees to the current. And, um, and usually fish swim up the current um, and often, this sounds funny, but often not always towards the sun yeah. or, or light. Um, but it's just a, you, you just get used to these little things. Yeah. But, but yeah, one of the favorite things is just look for a little bit of cover and 90 degrees into the current and just watch for these fish going past, generally up the current. And um, yeah, taking, a, taking your pick. Yeah, and you can, see, you can see current from the surface because, um, or from the land at least, because current tends to distort the surface of the water. So it will either make a strong ripple where uh, maybe the wind is blowing one way and the current's going the other, and you get really peaky, peaky seas, like really confused sea at that point. But also, if you look out, you'll see like occlusions in the water where you'll get um, the warm water rising and the cold water dragging down, and, you, and, it, and it pulls the surface of the water flat, and you get these calm, glassy lines running through the water. Yeah. And that's where you're getting the change of temperature and normally a current running through them. Um, or at least a current running up and around them or something, but it's, but it's essentially dragging the surface flat. So if you see those, there's also a sign of a current. Um, but you can start to learn to use the current to your advantage because like Brad says, it's a good place to identify somewhere to hunt. Um, and uh, you can use it to help you, you know, get out to a spot sometimes if you're being really safe. You sometimes know? get back to a boat even, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you, don't just, miss the boat. Yeah, don't miss the boat, <laughs> but don't, you know, use it, don't abuse it. Don't, don't you abuse. You will get abused. It's mother nature theory, isn't it? Yeah, it will come and get you. Um, you know. Undercurrents, I mean, are, yeah. you know, even in open water, I mean, I've dived a 
can't say where. No. But uh, it's no. very decent reef. Yeah. Um, over Dawson, somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. And um, yeah, so yeah, that, that, that undercurrent off ledges. Yeah, dragging down. Dragging down. Um, just something that um, is just quite incredible to to to, yeah. to, to, be, to feel. Yeah. Um, another one I think uh, was uh, near the Isle of Wight, the Shambles. Another another one where you're just in current with four foot waves. Yeah. Uh, but there you, I was diving with an incredibly experienced boatman, and you know th th that's that's hunting on the quick there. Yeah. That's really really, and the noise from the gravel and yeah. yeah there's all sorts of situations with current if you guys that are just starting out learn it's it is all a journey this is just day by day every day you dive is another day you can't just click your fingers or read this in the book no um so you, you you've got to learn it admiralty charts there were there was something in the old days which were on paper, you could open up. You mm. study headland, study form, underneath form. It's all about- Again, it's where that water, water wants to where, move. It's what Ian's yeah. saying. Um, these days, uh, you know, there's things out there like Navionics. There's the web map. Or uh, Embark, have you seen it? Uh, so I found no. this app, so this amazing app, and again, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything, and it seems to be, unless I've found a glitch in the matrix, it seems to be free. So it's called Embark, um, right. and it gives you international uh, marine data and you don't have to pay for any of it wow. uh, and it shows you all the underwater it shows you everything you get in avionics but it's free and it seems to be the only thing that you pay for is the boat plot charting aspect got it yeah so you're getting the free map so for us it's amazing I can go anywhere in the world and go zoom 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 ah that's how deep it is Here's a reef, here's a wreck. Shows you everything, it's amazing. Brilliant. Yeah, Embark, check it out. It's on, it's on Google Play Store at least. I'm pretty sure it's probably on iOS. It seems like a big, big deal, so. Yeah. Um, but that will show you all the contours, like Brett was saying, and, it will, and you just kind of have to think of that fluid movement, you know, and think about where water's gonna go and, and how it might be affected by you know, wind and current ch and um, tidal change and stuff. I mean, uh, uh, this, this thing of high and low, Mm. Tides is not. It's th there's multiple tides within yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tides. Yeah. So you've you've always got to be aware. You can't just go and jump off Portland Bill and think that that's a great idea. And don't think that just because the tide's coming in, it's going to bring you in. Not a chance. You know, uh, like there's a there's a spot on the south coast here near, near here in Falmouth where an incoming tide produces a strong outward flow. Yeah. And it's like it, it it's like it's so confusing. The water's going in totally the opposite direction that you would think it would go. Um, you get little eddies and pockets where it's spinning around and you know it's it's And that's where the experienced guys are using yeah. eddies and pockets and ledges. Yeah. But they are on the money and these are these are years years down the line sort of um, experienced yeah. spirits. So I think I mean ultimately, you know, how do you deal with currents? You've got the, the basic thing of understanding them learning where they are, looking for them before you get in the water. Yep. Feeling them. Feel, I was about looking, to say, and then you've got a feeling them. Yeah. Just, just you, know, you know what? That, that, that cat sense, that, six, mm. that, that tingle, yeah. if it doesn't feel right. Spidey sense. Exactly. Spidey. Out of there. <laughs> so, say, like, there's a, I keep, I say, it's something I keep reiterating to students recently, and it's... Uh, Trust yourself. Trust your instincts. But, but it's having that awareness of yourself. Mm. We get so swept away excuse the pun but in the whole experience of the dive sometimes you don't see the wood for the trees you know and it's like you're if the kelp is suddenly going this way right and you're not paying any attention to what's around you and you're not looking up now and again and you're not referencing a headland and you're just focused down down or you're trying to reload a gun or something like that before you know it you could be in some trouble so you just have to kind of like always reassess your situation. Be constantly. aware with, with, with spearfishing because there's always that one more fish, that one more dive, mm. that what it, it does and do it this to just, you. And it just tip you over the edge to and, the point where it's dangerous. And you've, you've swum a mile or, or two. Yeah. I know I, I once, I, I, oh God, I went down, down the track away and, and I just lost myself. Yeah, and you end up with, I mean, normally you find somewhere to come in and it's a really, just a really long yeah. walk home. Yeah. You know, but 
Worst case, it could be something more serious. Yeah. Um, from a free diving point of view, with currents, uh, it's very similar. There's no real change in that. I would say the only difference being if you were doing depth dives on a float, that you might experience some drift in the current. Um, don't try and anchor off a float because you'll just get a, a, a line being pulled over. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to go with it if you're doing that. And then if you're doing that, I would really recommend knowing where that current is going or having boat support with you. Because if you don't have either of those, then you could be in a similar situation where you're just drifting miles off with essentially like under, an underwater sail dragging you at full speed. Um, and if you're tethered to that line with a lanyard, it could be even more dangerous. So. It, it brings back so many like laughable stories from you know guys yeah. and you know the techniques. You know, yeah. you know people with a with a float hundred meters behind a boat, yeah. down, drop, drop up, yeah. drop up, come up, grab all the float, all the way back up. Yeah. Not suggesting this at all. Not sure if I should even be mentioning right. but, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, this happens, and this is what yeah. people do. Usually, this is a team of divers with a boat man and a safety cover and a plan always, yeah, a, always plan. a plan yeah. always a plan so yeah just um to learn the learn the sights remember to swim sideways give yourself a moment to think and be really aware of where you are i'd say that's my main things anyway that's enough on that subject um if you have any subjects you want us to cover please pop it in the comments below and uh, we'll do our best to cover them in a future episode in the meantime dive very safe watch out for those currents and we'll see you again soon cheers, see guys. you later cheers